Hello everyone. Uh, welcome to the class. In this class, we will study the bilinear transformation technique to design IIR filters. Now, what is the bilinear transformation technique? The bilinear transformation yields stable digital filters from stable analog filters. Uh, in bilinear transformation technique, we will follow the same approach we, which we followed in the impulse invariant technique where we will take the uh, analog filter transfer function and we will convert from the uh, pre-existing analog transfer function and we will convert it into a uh, digital filter. But uh, the technique, the impulse in the drawback of the drawback with the impulse invariant technique was that there was a problem of aliasing and uh, we will be able to overcome that aliasing problem in the bilinear transformation technique. Let us see how uh, the design can be made using the bilinear transformation. Also, the bilinear transformation avoids the problem of aliasing encountered with the use of impulse invariant transformation because it maps the entire imaginary axis in the S-plane onto the unit circle in the Z-plane. Uh, bilinear transformation uh, maps the complete imaginary axis in the, uh, on the unit circle in the z-plane. Whereas, uh, if you remember, let me explain this point. Uh, let's say this is my imaginary axis in the s-plane. Now, the complete left side of the uh, imaginary axis, that means the complete uh, j omega axis, imaginary axis from minus infinity to infinity, will be mapped inside the unit circle in the bilinear transformation technique. Whereas what was happening in the uh, impulse invariant technique was we were able to obtain strips. Uh, for example, the first strip from minus pi by t to plus pi by t and then minus 3 pi by t to uh, minus pi by t like that. So every strip, uh, for example, the strip from minus pi by t to plus pi by t will go into the uh, unit circle. The next strip will also go into the unit circle and like that. So because of this, there was a problem of aliasing. That's what is shown here. Each strip maps onto the interior of the unit circle. So therefore, aliasing problem was there. Now in this kind of mapping, the perimeter is the imaginary axis. Uh, mapping does not exist for the zeros. And there is another drawback that uh, the impulse invariant technique is not able to map the uh, zeros also. Uh, all, uh, for example, 1 over s plus b, we saw, we know that in the impulse invariant technique, what is the transformation? For example, if a analog filter is given to you, uh, low pass filter equation is there, 1 over s plus b. So one pole is there, the transformation is 1 over 1 minus e to the power minus b, capital T, z to the power minus 1, for b greater than 0. Now, this is the transformation in the uh, impulse invariant technique. In this kind of mapping, the perimeter is the imaginary axis and mapping does not exist for the zeros. So mapping, uh, we are not able to map with this impulse invariant technique, uh, the zeros also. And there is, of course, the problem of uh, uh, aliasing. But since in the bilinear transformation, what we will do, we will map the complete uh, J omega, J capital omega axis, uh, that means the imaginary axis inside the unit circle. So it will lead to a stable filter and uh, there will not be any problem of the aliasing. Okay. Now let us see what is the uh, transformation. What is the uh, bilinear transformation that we can make? Now, z is equal to e to the power s capital T. This is from the standard uh, Laplace transform equation. The relationship between the Laplace, Laplace transform and the uh, z transform. Now, just uh, doing a certain manipulation in this equation, e to the power, we will say e to the power s capital T by 2, and we take other part in the denominator. And we then expand uh, using the exponential series. So after expanding, what we will do, we will drop out all higher order terms, right? 
and we we are now left with one over one plus s capital T by two and one minus s capital T by two. Solving it further, what we will get is uh, s is equal to two by t one minus z to the power minus one divided by one plus z to the power minus one. This is the this is actually the uh, bilinear transformation. That means in the analog uh, filter transfer function, wherever s is there, replace every s with this uh, equation 2 by t 1 minus z to the power minus 1 1 plus z to the power minus 1 and whatever the final transfer function you get that will be the digital filter uh, designed using bilinear transformation technique from the from its analog counterpart okay now of course we are able to do away with the problem of aliasing in bilinear transformation but the price paid for the avoidance of aliasing is an introduction of distortion in the frequency axis. So let's see what is this problem. And consequently, the design of digital filters using the bilinear transformation is only useful if the distortion introduced can be compensated. That means if we are able to compensate the frequency distortion, then, we, then the filter uh, designed will be a stable filter and uh, quite well uh, the analog filter is transformed into the digital filter. Now, uh, first of all, let's see what is this distortion, how this distortion uh, in the frequency axis has uh, originated. Now, we have a system function HAS. So, this is the system function given such that um, this is the, uh, let's explain the things using an example. We are given with the analog filter transfer function where it is B over S plus B. So that's the filter transfer function. And we have to transform into a digital filter using the bilinear transformation. Now apply by bilinear transformation, meaning by S is to be replaced with two by T, one minus Z to the power minus one, one plus Z to the power minus one. So wherever S is there, we put this uh, uh, transformation and whatever, so we, after doing the calculation, we get uh, this equation, right? So this equation is the transfer function in the uh, Z domain. All right, now let us consider, let's, because we have to un understand the uh, frequency distortion problem. So let us plot this, uh, the frequency response uh, using, a value of B to be 1000 and capital T to be 1000 just for simplicity because we have to ultimately see the shape of the curves that result and let us understand the frequency distortion problem, right? So after putting these values into the transfer, uh, transfer function in the Z domain. Now let us plot the magnitude response from this uh, transfer function in the Z domain. Now the modulus of the frequency response and that means the magnitude response and uh, in the analog domain and in the uh, digital domain are plotted here in these two graphs. Now first, because uh, we have introduced the values of B and T, uh, B as 1000 and uh, capital T as 1 over 1000, and we finally get this expression. Our h j omega is equal to b over j omega plus b. Now along the x-axis is the analog frequency uh, varying from uh, 0 to 1500 pi and so on. And you know, on the negative, also, negative axis also it varies from minus 1500 pi and so on. And it, the maximum value is one. And this is the magnitude response. Now th that means this is the analog spectrum in the uh, spectrum in the analog domain. Now let us see the equivalent uh, digital spectrum. Now we know that uh, this x-axis is small omega, which is the digital frequency, right? The digital frequency, what will happen is that the whole analog spectrum going from minus infinity to infinity, as I said, the whole J capital omega axis, that means the imaginary axis, will be mapped into the unit circle. Now, unit circle uh, goes from minus pi to pi. If you take a round of the unit circle, that means uh, this value 
this value of the unit circle is zero. If you go this side, this is pi, and from minus pi, it starts and it again comes to uh, zero. So that means the value of the digital frequency will be from minus pi to pi, uh, covering the complete circle. Now the complete analog spectrum from minus infinity to infinity, that means the complete imaginary axis will be mapped, where will be mapped to minus pi to pi in the digital domain. The complete analog spectrum will be mapped inside from minus pi to pi. Now what is the result of this? The, the what, what happens is the spectrum squashes out. When you compress from the uh, from the uh, extremities, what will happen uh, from inside the uh, from the uh, the curve uh, near the region will squash out, and uh, there is kind of broadening of the pulse, right? And this is also shown here. Pi in the please remember that pi in the digital domain is actually uh, corresponding to fs by two in the analog domain. Minus pi in the digital domain actually corresponds to minus fs over 2. All right. And this is minus pi by capital T. This is also minus pi by capital T as big omega. And this is also pi by capital T as big omega. So we must understand the relationship between the digital small omega is the digital frequency where the frequency, this is known as frequency distortion. Why this is happening? Because the complete j omega axis in the bilinear transformation, the complete j omega axis, we are trying to map into the unit circle. That's why this um, uh, this type of warping, this effect is called warping. Uh, this effect takes place in the uh, bilinear transformation. All right. Now there is a very important property of the bilinear transformation that can be seen in the above example, as uh, I have tried to explain it through this example. The entire frequency range, uh, the entire analog frequency range from minus infinity this side to plus infinity on this side of the continuous systems maps into the fundamental interval, which is from minus pi to pi, that is in the digital domain of the discrete system, of the discrete system, where uh, capital omega equal to zero corresponds to small omega equal to zero capital omega equal to infinity to small omega equal to pi, as I was explaining in the pre for the previous slide, and capital omega equal to minus infinity to small omega equal to minus pi. So that's the transformation, that's the mapping that takes place in uh, bilinear transformation, which results into uh, frequency distortion. Though this bilinear transformation is able to uh, overcome the problem of aliasing, uh, which was prevalent in the case of uh, in, uh, impulse invariant technique of design of IIR filters. All right. Now to demonstrate that this mapping has the property that the that the imaginary axis in the S-plane maps onto the unit circle. So let's try to do uh, further. So what happens is uh, we in the bilinear transformation formula. We will try to put z equal to e to the power j omega because uh, to uh, because uh, that's how we get the frequency response. And in the s uh, for the s we try to put the, uh, j equal to capital omega. Now once we introduce these two, once we make these two substitutions in the bilinear transformation formula, we get this result. Solving it further because this j will cancel out with this j and capital omega is equal to 2 by t tangent of small omega by 2. This small omega is the digital frequency and this capital omega is the uh, analog frequency. Or we can say that uh, small omega is equal to twice of tan inverse uh, capital omega capital T by 2. That's the relationship between the digital frequency and the analog frequency. Uh, which we have obtained through the bilinear transformation and by substituting the values of z and s. Now we see that a nonlinear relationship exists. Now just try to uh, solve it further for low frequencies. What happens is tan inverse in this equation because tan inverse is there. Now tan inverse capital omega capital T by 2 
for low frequencies is approximately equal to omega capital omega capital t by 2 so we can just replace tan inverse uh, simply by uh, capital omega t by 2 so once we do that we get the relationship between the digital frequency which is small omega is equal to capital omega into t so that's what we are trying to plot here this is a that's what uh, this is a nonlinear relationship. Tan inverse is a nonlinear relationship, but for low frequencies, the relationship turns out to be uh, linear. Now, if we take capital omega, capital T on the x-axis, and we take small omega, the digital frequency on the y-axis, what happens is for low frequencies, for low omega frequencies, for low analog frequencies, what happens? the relationship is linear that's what we are trying to say here when when tan inverse uh, is equal tan inverse uh, omega t by 2 is omega t by 2 so that establishes the linear relationship but for as we go for the higher frequencies of uh, analog uh, domain uh, or both on the positive axis and the negative axis so what happens is it, it becomes a nonlinear. So this becomes kind of squash function. All right. So this squashes out and um, goes along the pi line only. And on the negative side, it goes along the minus pi line only. Now, what actually it says is that the there is a uh, there is a squashing of the higher frequencies because these frequencies, all the frequencies. Uh, going for the uh, going, all the analog frequencies going up to plus infinity and minus infinity will have to be accommodated in this range only minus pi to pi. So that's why this uh, squashing or what you call compression of the uh, frequencies will take place. Now let us try to, and this effect we see that a nonlinear relationship exists between uh, analog frequency and digital frequency, and this effect is called warping this effect of frequency distortion or uh, squashing of the frequencies for the digital domain is called warping. There is a great advantage of warping, which is that no aliasing. No, because warping is there, frequency distortion is there. So in the bilinear transformation, but it, it is also, uh, bilinear transformation is also an advantage over the impulse invariant technique uh, in the sense that aliasing of the frequency characteristics um, can reduce. We'll, we will go away with the aliasing problem. Can occur, because aliasing can occur from analog filter to digital filter, which this warping, uh, we will be able to encounter this problem. We'll be, uh, we'll be able to counter this problem, right? Which we actually encountered in impulse invariant method. That means um, using the bilinear transformation, warping will be there, frequency distortion will be there, but aliasing is gone away, which was there in impulse invariant method. We must, however, check carefully just how the various characteristic frequencies of the analog filter fit into the characteristic frequencies of the discrete filter. So we will see that how the frequencies fit into the, how the frequencies from the analog domain uh, actually fit into the digital domain. Now we can illustrate this with the help of a diagram in the next slide for a bandpass filter. Let's see the diagram. Now this is the diagram from where we can explain the effect of warping. Along x-axis is analog frequency. Along y-axis is digital frequency. Now. Uh, this is the analog filter response, the bandpass filter response. Uh, this is the origin. This is the zero value of the analog frequency. This is uh, some value omega 1 uh, of the analog frequency, capital omega 1. This is capital omega 2. This is capital omega 2. And this is capital omega 3. And what we will do is in this, because these are the characteristics that we earlier also see, these are the uh, nonlinear relationship that exists between uh, analog frequency and the digital frequency. Now, what we are trying to do in this diagram is that <coughs> corresponding to capital omega 1, we will see the digital frequency. Now, this is my digital frequency, which is uh, small omega 1. 
corresponding to capital omega 2 where is my digital frequency this is my uh, small omega 2 and you see the gap between small omega 1 and small omega 2 and you see the gap here uh, capital omega 1 and capital omega 2 so that means this gap is reduced in the digital domain and whereas the gap is larger in the analog analog frequency axis now let's see this capital omega 3 this capital omega 3 goes uh, somewhere here the difference between small omega 2 and small omega 3 is very less as compared to the difference between capital omega 2 and capital omega 3. So therefore, <clears throat> this effect is called warping, which is which we get in the bilinear transformation. So bilinear transformation uh, will remove the aliasing problem, right? This is the digital frequency response and this side, this is your analog frequency response. Now, the effect of warping is seen above in this diagram, right? Okay, so now let us see the problem of uh, warping and how we can avoid the warping in the uh, bilinear transformation uh, by doing, by first doing the pre-warping. Now, what is the meaning of pre-warping is that we will, uh, we will uh, pre-warp the uh, specifications of the digital filter that means to compensate for the warping what we will do is the deviation that the bilinear transformation will give to the frequencies we will take the frequencies uh, uh, to a value where if the bilinear transformation does the uh, deviation that deviation because we have pre-warped Right, the pre-warping will cancel out the effect of uh, the frequency deviation that the uh, bilinear transformation or warping will give to the frequencies. Now, that means in designing a digital filter by this method, we must first pre-warp so that the effect of the warping can be compensated because we have pre-warped. Uh, we must first pre-warp the given filter specifications to find the continuous filter to which we are going to apply the bilinear transformation. Now, I will explain it through the example. The specification of a desired digital filter is shown below. The sampling frequency given is 8 kilohertz. We can find out the sample period from that by taking its reciprocal, which is 125 microseconds. Now, uh, with the, we have a filter with the low frequency, low cutoff frequency is 2.6 kilohertz, right? So, if it is 2.6 kilohertz, that means it is the analog frequency given. Okay. Now we can find out omega L, which is the digital frequency, digital uh, low low cutoff frequency for the digital filter, is equal to the analog cutoff frequency, analog low cutoff frequency into capital T. So that means uh, if we expand this omega L as 2 pi FL and divided by FS because of this uh, capital T, it will be 0.65 pi. Now this uh, stop band frequency is uh, FU and uh, it is 3 kilohertz given. So we can find out the equivalent digital frequency also, which is 0.75 pi. Now let's see. So this is the digital filter that actually we want to design. We want that the low cutoff frequency should be 2.6 kilohertz. The upper, the uh, omega u should be 3 kilohertz, right? And this is the, uh, this is how the sampling frequency. Now let us try to apply uh, pre-warping and see how the uh, warping can be compensated using the pre-warping. What we will do is, uh, we will, take the analog frequency, low, low value of the uh, analog frequency, right, which is the cutoff frequency to a frequency larger than uh, 2.6 kilohertz, right, so that when in the, when we are using the bilinear transformation, the, and when we are transforming the analog uh, in the analog domain, the complete J omega, J capital omega axis, this, this frequency will be uh, squashed, but we have taken the frequency already to 4.155 kilohertz, so that once the warping take, takes place, this frequency actually comes out to be 2.6 kilohertz. 
Now, this using this formula, we can find out the analog frequency of uh, on this frequency we will apply the bilinear transformation technique. So this frequency is given by because 2.6 kilohertz is the desired frequency, but since we know that we already know that the warping will take place and we have to pre-warp, we will pre-warp the frequencies using this formula so that the analog frequency comes out to be 4.155 kilohertz and the upper cutoff frequency or you can say the stop band frequency is 6.4 6.148 kilohertz actually it is 3 kilohertz right but we have pre warped so that once we apply the uh, bilinear transformation this is the analog filter response with which we will design the we will go ahead with the bilinear transformation and we know that after bilinear transformation will be applied since warping warping will happen the ultimate result that we will get is uh, this uh, cutoff frequency as 2.6 kilohertz uh, or the stop band frequency as 3 kilohertz. So that's the that's the concept of warping which will be done by bilinear transformation, pre-warping which will be done by the designer so that the effect of warping can be compensated. Now let's take another example. Determine using bilinear transformation technique the transfer function and difference equation for the digital equivalent of the RC filter. Now, the this is the normalized response of the normalized transfer function of, of the RC filter, which is 1 over S plus 1 in the S domain. And we will assume a sampling frequency of 150 hertz and cutoff frequency of 30 hertz. So we have to actually apply the bilinear transformation and obtain the transfer function in the uh, Z domain and the difference equation for the digital equation. All right, let's do that. Now we know that omega c, which is the cutoff frequency in the digital domain, is equal to uh, the analog frequency, uh, analog cutoff frequency into capital T. We know this relationship exists, so uh, we can find out the uh, digital frequency, digital cutoff frequency. We are given with the analog cutoff frequency. Analog cutoff frequency is uh, 30 hertz. Sampling frequency is 150 hertz. So that means we apply, we come, we get the value of small omega c as 0.45. So this is before pre-warping. That means we know the actual requirement of the frequency, which is 0.45. Pre, this is pre-warped frequency. SC dash will be the frequency that we will uh, that we will pre-warp so that we get this SC unwarped frequency of 30 hertz. Right, and after warping, so applying that uh, that formula, uh, which is uh, two by t tan of uh, this formula, if you remember, two by t tan of uh, small omega by two, so we get this omega. Actually, desired cutoff frequency is 30 hertz, but we will get the uh, we will get after the warping. Uh, that means we will we will we will design the analog filter with this frequency 34.68 hertz so that we ultimately get the 30 hertz frequency the denormalized analog filter transfer function will be uh, achieved by uh, replacing this s with s over capital omega c because uh, this is the this is the transfer function in the analog domain and uh, we want to uh, this is a normalized transfer function and to denormalize the transfer function this s has to be replaced with s by omega capital omega c so that's what is done here this s by and we have to actually replace it by omega c dash because that's the pre warped frequency we will uh, we will uh, introduce in and we will do the we will do the calculations accordingly pre warped frequency is 34.68 hertz once we will take that 34.6 hertz 68 uh, uh, hertz then we will apply the bilinear transformation actually what is done is so this is your normalized transfer function now this omega c dash because we have we have yet not applied the bilinear transformation after this we will apply the bilinear transformation 
what we will do is omega c we will uh, we will put 2 by t tan of omega small omega by 2 right we will use this formula here 2 by t tan of omega by small omega by 2 so 2 by t tan of small omega what is small omega here that will be calculated using this 30 hertz because that's the uh, original frequency uh, we will require and after you do the calculations you will then get uh, fc dash 34.6 hertz actually you forget about this fc dash at present you are given with this fc as 30 hertz right so 30 hertz using this 30 hertz you apply you calculate this omega c dash how you calculate it 2 by t tan of uh, small omega c by 2 using 30 hertz so you get this formula using 30 hertz you will get this formula and after that you apply the bilinear transformation all right once you apply the how you will apply the bilinear transformation this s has to be replaced with 2 by t z minus 1 divided by z plus 1 once you replace s with this formula of bilinear transformation you get the transfer function of the digital filter in the z domain all right so this is the transfer function in the z domain uh, and this is basically the design of the uh, digital filter let's take one more example to further uh, put some light on the design process now it is required to design a digital filter to approximate the analog transfer function that means this is the analog transfer function given right this is a second order uh, transfer function uh, second order low pass filter transfer function s square plus under root 2s plus 1 this is a normalized filter transfer function because 1 is given here we will have to apply the bilinear transformation to design a digital filter now a 3 dB cutoff frequency is uh, 150 hertz and sampling frequency is 1.28 kilohertz that means this is the desired response that means we want a digital filter with a cutoff frequency of 150 hertz and sampling frequency of 1.28 kilohertz okay let us design this filter with a cutoff frequency of 150 hertz and a sampling frequency of 1.28 kilohertz now the cutoff frequency given is 150 hertz sampling frequency is uh, 1280 hertz we calculate the uh, omega small omega c which is the digital uh, frequency in radians per second right so this is radian uh, this is in radians per second so therefore we calculate this using this formula of 2 pi fc by fs and we calculate it equal to 15 by 64 pi this value is actually the desired digital fil filter cutoff frequency so we calculate it from here which is fc is 150 hertz and we have used the reciprocal of the sampling frequency which is the time period in this uh, calculation now the analog frequency after pre-warping meaning by this is the frequency required uh, right this is the frequency of the analog uh, filter required so that when you do when you apply the bilinear transformation the warping effect will uh, 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 this frequency will be uh, designed so that the warping effect is uh, compensated so therefore we calculate the analog frequency value analog omega c value which comes out to be 0 0.3 2 by t 0 0.3859 radians per second this is calculated using the formula of 2 by t tan of omega uh, small omega c by 2 and the frequency corresponding to this is 157.1656 hertz meaning by 150 is the actual desired frequency but we need to increase the frequency analog frequency uh, before uh, inputting it to the bilinear transformation so once you apply the bilinear transformation right the uh, applied frequency will be uh, will be shortened will be reduced that means so by how how much amount that we can determine from here and we will actually input this frequency as a as a pre-warped uh, value and therefore we once the bilinear transformation is applied we get the desired frequency of 150 hertz so that means fc dash which is the pre warped frequency is always greater than the cutoff frequency 
okay pre warped analog filter is given by so this is the uh, this is the frequency this is omega uh, capital omega c dash so we write it here omega capital omega c dash right square divided by s square plus uh, this omega c, capital omega c dash into under root 2s plus 2 by t this omega c uh, capital omega c dash square because this is the denormalized version of the uh, transfer filter this transfer filter because once you denormalize it you will get omega c square capital omega c square here also and capital omega c square here also so that's what is done in the uh, in the uh, denormalized filter transfer function now we have to now apply the bilinear transformation because we have already done the pre warping so once you apply the bilinear transformation you replace s with 2 by t into z to the z minus 1 and divided by z plus 1 so every s has to be replaced with this value so we replace here and we finally get uh, the uh, transfer function in the digital domain. So this is the digital filter designed using the bilinear transformation from the given uh, analog transfer function. And this is the frequency response. We can plot this is 150 hertz as the cutoff frequency and 640 hertz is the half of the sampling frequency. The sampling frequency was 1280 hertz. So this is the just, just the diagrammatic representation of the uh, frequency response of the filter design. You see here that this is the analog frequency response, whereas this is the uh, this curve shows the digital frequent uh, dig digital filter frequency response. Cutoff frequency for both the analog and the digital counterparts are the same as 150 hertz. Only thing is that increased roll off and attenuation in stop band. If you look at the digital frequency response, the roll off has increased and also the attenuation in the stop band has also increased right so let us take one more example it says that analog transfer function can be converted to a digital transformation using the bilinear transformation derive this transform relationship using the following equation so this is the difference equation for the digital integrator is given and the uh, the exact equation can also be explained in the analog domain which with uh, hs equal to 1 by s. So let's see how, how the relationship can be established. Where capital T is the sampling period, xn is the input and yn is the output. So let's try to establish the relationship. So this is the difference equation. You must take the z transform uh, of this equation. Once you take the z transform, you will get this equation and uh, then you will have to calculate yz by xz which means hz basically which is the transfer function in the z domain you will get this value t by 2 1 plus z to the power minus 1 1 minus z to the power minus 1 which is basically 1 over s because if you look at the uh, if you look at the bilinear transformation actually s is to be replaced with this value so out of this value we get um, 1 over s basically if you just compare the actual formula of the bilinear transformation so hs is equal to 1 by s that means these two uh, relationships are counterparts of each other this is in the digital domain and this is in the analog domain both are integrators in their respective domains now if you set these two values you will get the value of the bilinear transformation which is given by this formula now there is another example which says that which uh, which requires the conversion of the analog filter hs given by this this is s plus uh, capital omega c divided by s plus 0 0.1 square plus uh, omega c square right so this is s plus 0 0.1 divided by s plus 0 0.1 whole square plus capital omega c square actually this is the capital omega c square, omega not square or omega c square you take as the cutoff frequency here it is uh, omega not given so the analog counterpart will be uh, the uh, capital omega not so this is the transfer function in the analog domain so this becomes the denormalized transfer function this is the denormalized transfer function because this one is not here from here you can calculate the resonant frequency which is capital omega not which is 4 radian per second because 
this is 16.01 uh, and this is capital omega naught square so once you take the under root you will get 4 radians per second now this frequency is to be mapped into small omega naught pi by 2 which is the digital frequency requirement by selecting the value of the parameter capital T now this omega naught which is the uh, which is the analog frequency so this has to be mapped to pi by 2 in the digital domain so from here this will be 4 this will be pi by 2 we can calculate capital T so capital T is equal to 1 by 2 right in order to have if you take pre warped frequency in the analog domain as 4 radian per second then and you want the uh, digital frequency pi by 2 then you must take a sampling period of 1 1 over 2 so from here you can calculate the sampling frequency also thus the desired mapping because the bilinear transformation says that it, it is one formula is 2 by t so t we have calculated as half so it the bilinear mapping will be s is equal to 4 into 1 minus z to the power minus 1 divided by 1 plus z to the power minus and in the given transfer function, we can replace s with this value. Uh, sorry, this value 4 into 1 minus z to the power minus 1 divided by 1 plus z to the power minus 1. And we will ultimately get, and we just, uh, the solution is given here. If you solve this uh, calculation, you get uh, this transfer function 0 0.128 plus 0 0.006 z to the power minus 1 minus 0 0.122 z to the power minus 2 divided by 1 plus 0.975 z to the power minus 2. Now, if you calculate the poles from here, if you just put this characteristic equation equal to 0, then you will get two poles P1 and P2 with these and uh, these two poles are expressed in the polar form. The radius from the origin to the pole is 0.987 for both. These are uh, complex conjugate pair of poles and zeros will occur at uh, 1 0 will occur at uh, minus 1 the other zero will occur at uh, 0.95. So this is, and you can plot the pole zero plot for this filter also. All right. Okay. So now we come, uh, what we have done till now is that we have designed the low pass filter using bilinear transformation. Low pass digital IIR filter using bilinear transformation. All right. Now we want to convert the low pass filter prototype in the digital domain to other types of filters also. For example, low pass to high pass, low pass to band pass, low um, band stop filters. Now, uh, digital to digital transformations. We know that one method for the design of analog filters relied on the or relied on applying a transformation to an uh, analog low pass filter with a unit bandwidth. I mean, when you have to convert uh, a low pass filter, analog, when you have to design a low pass filter uh, of some other cutoff frequency other than the unit cutoff frequency, then we can apply a transformation by which we can get the analog low pass filter of certain cutoff frequency. And we also know the transformations exist. Uh, by which we can convert a low pass prototype uh, a filter in the analog domain to a high pass filter or a band pass filter and a band stop filter by selecting the appropriate transformation. Similarly, a set of transformations can be formed and they exist that take a low pass digital filter and turn it into high pass, band pass, band stop or any other low pass digital filter. Let's see those transformations by which we can by making use of the, those trans, uh, transformations, we can directly get the uh, filter, low pass filter, low pass digital filter transformed into either a high pass, band pass, or a band stop filter. Let's see. Now, this is the digital transformations uh, which can convert the uh, low pass of certain frequency to a low pass filter of certain other frequency. Let's say a uh, small omega p is one digital frequency, uh, one cutoff frequency. K1 is the attenuation, that's the minus 3 dB attenuation, minus 3 dB frequency. So this is the cutoff frequency. Now we want to design a filter 
with uh, 3d minus 3 db cutoff frequency as omega p dash now we can we can use the same existing digital filter we can apply the we can apply this transformation this transformation says that z to the power minus 1 wherever z to the power minus 1 will exist in the transfer function of this filter or in the transformation of the existing filter we will we will substitute this z to the power minus 1 to this transformation which says that z to the power minus 1 minus alpha divided by 1 minus alpha z to the power minus 1. Wherever in the existing low pass filter z to the power minus 1 will exist, we will replace it with z to the power minus 1 minus alpha divided by 1 minus alpha z to the power minus 1. Now the question is what is alpha? Alpha will be given by sine of omega b which is the cutoff frequency of the existing uh, low pass filter omega p dash is the frequency of the desired uh, low pass filter divided by 2 and the, in the denominator you will have sine of omega p plus omega p dash divided by 2. So you calculate the value of alpha from here you substitute the value of alpha and you will get the final expression after uh, substituting this z to the power minus 1 in the existing low pass filter and uh, by this transformation. So this is one transformation by which you can design a low pass filter of omega p frequency uh, to another low pass filter of any omega p dash cutoff frequency, 3 dB minus 3 dB cutoff frequency. All right, now let's see low pass to high pass transformation. Again, the principle remains the same. This, is, this curve shows the omega p is the minus 3 dB cutoff frequency for the low pass filter prototype digital low pass filter prototype and we want to transform it into a high pass filter with omega p as the cutoff frequency. Now you in, in, in the existing uh, transfer function for the low pass filter prototype wherever z to the power minus 1 will be there you will have to replace it with z to the power minus 1 plus alpha divided by 1 plus alpha z to the power minus 1. In the low pass to low pass filter, it was z to the power minus 1 minus alpha. There is a negative sign here in the numerator also, negative sign in the denominator also. But when you want to translate, when we want to transform it into low pass to high pass, there will be plus sign. Otherwise, the factors remain the same. And what is alpha? Alpha is given by cos of uh, omega p plus omega p dash divided by 2. And... Uh, uh, divide in the numerator you have cos of omega p minus omega p dash divided by 2. Here also uh, sign will be in the low pass to low pass filter sign was there, here cos is there, plus sign in the numerator there is minus sign, here in the numerator it is the plus sign and here it is negative sign in the denominator. So by certain uh, uh, differences you will be able, able to convert a low pass filter prototype to a low pass uh, new low pass digital filter or a high pass digital filter then comes the low pass to band pass filter let's say uh, we we are given with uh, an exist we are given with a low pass digital filter prototype with the omega p as the cutoff frequency and these are the, uh, the this figure shows the desired band pass filter uh, response where omega l is the lower cutoff, lower minus 3 dB point, and omega u is the uh, higher uh, minus 3 dB point, lower cutoff frequency and upper cutoff frequency. Now, in the existing uh, transfer function, z to the power minus 1 will be replaced by this uh, transformation. Little complex, but you will have to replace this z to the power minus every year. Every the point is that every z to the power minus one will, needs to be replaced with uh, z minus two minus two alpha k over k plus one z to the power minus one plus k minus one divided by k plus one. This is in the numerator, and similar term is there in the denominator. And where alpha is given by cos of omega u plus omega l divided by two. Uh, in, the numerator, in the denominator, you have cos of omega u minus omega l divided by 2. And where k is also a factor, another factor, which is given by cotangent of omega u minus omega l divided by 2 dot tan omega p by 2. So these are the formulas uh, by making, we will not derive these formulas, but 
we will we will have these transformations and we can use these transformations to design uh, a low pass filter or a high pass filter or a band pass filter and similarly there is transformation for the low pass to band stop filter in the band stop filter also you have the omega l which is the uh, stop band attenuation for the lower cut off frequency and the stop the, this point is the stop band attenuation for the lower cut off frequency and the uh, upper cut off frequency and you need to replace that uh, to the power minus 1 with this transformation and the rest of the uh, things remain the same so that's the uh, band stop filter band pass the design of band pass filter low pass filter and low pass to low pass uh, thank you pass to band stop filter let's see